Uh, good morning, everyone. Um, great to be here today at this wonderful conference. My name is Ray Jancosa, and I am an Access to Capital Consultant for the SPDC at FIU. I was a career banker for over 35 years and a Jung College professor since 1985, teaching a lot of bankers that today are running banks. And uh, I'm here today to present on one of my favorite topics, which is how to become a bankable business. Uh, having been a banker for so many years, obviously gives me an advantage to be able to allow you to see through the eyes of the banker as to what it is that makes your business bankable. So let me start. So we started at the beginning uh, and, and the idea is to understand what it is that banks look for and some suggestions and recommendations, how you can better prepare yourself to become more bankable as a business and understand uh, you know, the, the methodology, the metrics, and uh, how uh, you're evaluated by banks and other lenders. And you need to understand then how lenders evaluate the borrowers, which is very key. And, and one great start in all of this is using the platform of the five C's of credit, which is in fact a platform that is used by all lenders, both traditional community banks, larger banks, et cetera, use this platform to evaluate uh, a given borrower. So it's critical for you to understand that. And as you see, the five C's are character, capacity, capital, collateral, and condition. And we will evaluate and go over and discuss each one uh, so you can grasp a better understanding. Now, you know, all lenders use this uh, platform and uh, it's, uh, you have both qualitative and quantitative issues on here uh, that uh, encompass how they evaluate your business. Uh, you don't want to make sure that they can determine the overall strength of the borrower through these uh, analysis. So the first one is character, uh, which is the, the first of the five C's. And of course, character doesn't mean, well, whether or not you're, you're a nice lady or a nice guy or amicable. It's really about your credit score. How have you behaved in using credit? And also very importantly, what knowledge Do you have acquisition financing and they try to buy a business that they have absolutely no experience in and that becomes a difficulty. Uh, uh, so it's important to understand that, uh, you know, uh, character is the first of the five C's and, it, and it's very, very, very important. So your credit scores and, you know, really what it means and, and work on improving it. And, you know, what I like to say about this is that, you know, your, your credit score is just a moment in time. It isn't that, you know, it's all over. I can't improve this. But I think by you are grasping a better understanding of how the, uh, the FICO score, as it's called, uh, works, the better it will be for you to improve your credit. So you, you should always be vigilant about your credit rating because it's a, of critical importance when you try to solicit a loan. As you can see, the breakdown in the FICO is payment history 35 and amount owned 30. So 65% of the score is based on and weighted on how well you're making payments, uh, you're on time, and what kind of utilization you have on your outstanding lines. And typically, you know, the recommendation is to try to be under 30%. Then the rest of it is the length of credit history. If you've had credit a long time, typically borrowers that are in, up in the 800s are typically uh, individuals that have had credit for many, many years. Then you have new credits as you, you know, borrow additional, uh, that goes into the equation. Then finally, the types of credit revolving, being not as good as installment credit because installment credit is one disbursement 
revolvers can change uh, from one day to another and can increase your indebtedness uh, almost immediately. Okay. And of course, the three credit bureaus, important to know Equifax, Experian, and TransUnion. In the case of Equifax, it's, it's much more accurate for those of us living on the East Coast. Experian has been doing a, a good job overall. And then TransUnion is mostly on the West Coast. So it's important again to know where you are on the credit score spectrum and, and be vigilant about it. And there are many ways you can do this. You can go to Credit Karma, Credit Sesame, there are so many, or you can go directly to the actual bureaus uh, and, and be, be vigilant about watching your credit and watching the recommendations that are made to improve that credit. Again, this is just a moment in time. You can do something about it. The other important thing to mention is that banks, they have created their own internal uh, FICO score. So it's important to, to be aware of that may be one that encompasses any depository relationship that you may have with, uh, with the bank. Now, as you can see, you know, taking action to repair your credit, as you improve the credit, it's like an inverse relationship with pricing. You know, if you go up the ladder, you go down in, in the cost, in the interest rate. So this is just, a, you know, an idea to, to kind of give you where you should be. I think if you're in the 670, 680 and above, that is a, a, an acceptable uh, a score. It's a, good, it's a good score. Obviously, as you go up, it becomes better. And as, as you go up further, obviously, the cost of financing drops significantly. Now, uh, Albe, the, the, the reality is that if you're going for a mortgage loan, uh, the, they may accept a, uh, a lower FICO score, maybe as low as 580, but that's typically the FHA, Fannie Mae type of programs. The next C is capacity, your ability to repay a loan. This is, you know, purely quantitative. It's, uh, it's obviously it's very important to make sure that, um, you know, that you're able to, to repay the loan. And, and capacity evaluation is, as I mentioned, a quantitative process. But it's important to understand that it uses both your personal income as well as your company's income. That's why they call it universal cash flow. And uh, what they try to the surmise is the level of indebtedness that you have as a borrower, and, and obviously that's going to have an impact on your capacity to repay the loan. Now, what are the key areas that banks want to evaluate? It, it's very important for you to understand is that one is liquidity, the next one indebtedness, profitability, and efficiency. Um, if I started with efficiency, it's really about the working capital cycle. How quickly your operating cycle is concluded, meaning when you buy inventory, how you buy it, do you finance it? When you sell the product, do you sell it on credit? You do, you create accounts receivable, and then obviously you need to get paid. And then it concludes, uh, you pay your, out your debt, you pull out your profit, and the cycle begins again. Having a short, the shorter the, the cycle, obviously the better. Some industries have, larger cycles than others, but you know, if you're within a fast operating cycle, your chances of, 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 of getting a, a loan are, are increasing. So liquidity is always, you know, the ability to meet short-term obligations with short-term debt. Uh, and sometimes there are a lot of companies out there that, that have way too much debt on a short-term basis, that's why sometimes terming it out through a secured lending uh, works to bring down the, uh, the uh, monthly payments and increases your cash flow. Solvency is a level of indebtedness and your financial management of that indebtedness. Obviously, the more debt that you carry, the more leveraged you are, the higher the risk rating for your company. So understanding the debt service coverage ratio, and this is something that I always like to share with everyone, that the typical 
um, ratio that is used is the debt service coverage ratio for companies. And when it when you're talking about individuals, those of you that have gotten mortgages, you may recall the debt to income ratio. It's the same thing. Here, what we try to determine is, you know, the net operating uh, income uh, over, uh, actually it's the numerator on the equation where the denominator in this case would be your principal interest payments for the next 12 months. So it's gotta be at a one and a quarter. One and a quarter, I call it the ticket to admission. Uh, if you find, and you will find, and some companies will find that you're not at that level, if you're not, it's going to be very difficult uh, for you to, to get a loan uh, with a bank. And quite frankly, the higher the risk on the transaction, this debt service co coverage ratio will definitely go up, okay? So it's very important to, to be able to determine where you stand in that, in that area, because it is uh, a crucial, and as you can see, I provided you with uh, the equation on the debt service coverage ratio, and uh, and we and you know if you need to know more about this, obviously you can reach out to me with all the information that you have on the website and stuff. Okay, now so here's an example uh, of looking at in this case EBITDA, which is earnings before interest, taxes, depreciation. And amortization is it's determining the cash flow of a company. Obviously, we know nobody writes a check for depreciation. So these are an amortization. These are non-cash items are added back. As you can see, in the case of this company, uh, the debt service coverage ratio is not quite where it should be. It's at 1.03 instead of 1.25. Profitability obviously reflects company success in generating profits. I always say this is your report card. Uh, many times I've had clients that are playing this game uh, with their accountant about trying to pay as little taxes as possible, and then they wonder why they can't seem to get a loan from a bank. Uh, you know, if, if you're telling them that you paid very little taxes because you didn't earn enough, then they're going to ask you, well, how are you going to pay my, my loan? So you need to understand that. You need to understand your margins. Uh, and profitability and um, you know there there's a lot of information out there regarding break-even analysis I mean you need to understand what your profit margins are because there may be opportunities to 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 raise them or opportunities to determine which products are lost leaders etc and it's just going to help you increase your profitability so again you have to embrace the numbers uh, so the typical challenges, I, I get it, I understand it. It's, you know, the balance sheet, profit loss, and cash flow statements. A lot of people are so fearful of accounting. And, you know, I, I understand that, but, you know, uh, it's really not that difficult. Um, you And there's a lot of information that, that, you know, the SBDC centers can provide at, a, at a no cost. We do an incredible amount of training in this area. Uh, financial statements are the, the financial language of bankers. This is what they use to evaluate your company. So it's important for you to, you know, promise yourself that you're going to try your best to get a better grasp and understanding of financial statements. And then the efficiency ratio, as I mentioned before, is just the, the buying of inventory and how quickly you can sell it and, uh, now, in case of receivables, uh, those of you that are out there, you've heard of receivable financing. I think one of the, the reasons I put these slides in here is I wanted to explain that uh, just because you have, let's say, half a million dollars in receivables doesn't mean that the bank is going to go out and give you a half a million on that. Or even the 80% typical loan to value on that purely on the total amount. They're, they're going to carve out uh, issues such as level of delinquency, if the the terms that you that you uh, arrange are too long for their criteria, they're going to carve it out. And if you have uh, concentration risk, meaning you have a client that represents a large percentage of your uh, of your receivables, they're going to carve that out too. Then whatever is left, they'll they'll lend you eighty percent on on that value. Okay. 
So without quantitative analysis, I say there all the key areas of business, you know, you know, banks are just not going to extend the loan. So you need, as a company, you need to understand what your level of indebtedness is, right? Make sure you have, you know, strong, sustainable cash flows, you know, manage that profitability and please be vigilant on your credit scores, right? The next C, collateral. It's a secondary source of repayment. And I always say to people, you know, you know, collateral does not make a bad loan good, just a good loan better. Um, it's, it's very important uh, and that you know and you understand that it is a, um, a secondary source of repayment that's, and it's viewed that way. However, it can be used, collateral can be used in situations where if you're a new company, um, you, you don't have that much of a history yet, but yet you have a collateral. This collateral may be able to get you good, some good term, terms. If, you're, if your score is low, that it will also help as well. And um, so, um, you know, you could use that uh, wisely. Now, there are a lot of companies out there that in the beginning are, don't have that much intangible assets and they have to uh, base their loan request on, on cash flow or uh, projections of cash flow on business, it becomes a little bit more difficult. All right, so in today's environment, banks definitely are more cash flow sensitive and that's sensitive, but trust me, believe it or not, that they love the collateral. Now, we experienced some nightmares back in the financial crisis of 2008 and uh, in managing the, you know, REOs, uh, uh, these loans that, banks were holding trying to to get rid of uh it was it was a nightmare so you know i remember driving up to orlando to uh, to see with investors um some uh units that today uh, are worth about three hundred and fifty thousand dollars, and they were going for twenty five thousand dollar a door just to give you an idea so uh it, it was a it was a crazy uh, environment uh, so condition is the, the number four of, of, that I have of the five C's of credit. And this one is more about the actual industry, you know, what direction's headed. Uh, you know, is it a mature industry? Is it an industry that's uh, under a, a lot of regulatory scrutiny, uh, you know, with high barriers of entry? Uh, all of this uh, it will affect and, or can affect the your loan request that's why you know some some banks will not do construction lending for example um you know some banks will not lend to furniture stores some banks as you all have seen were very difficult with the hospitality industry obviously this is more pandemic related but the the bottom line is that I, and i tell this to a lot of my clients at sbc please do not you know you know keep your valuable depository relationship with a bank that will more likely never lend money in your industry. So why would you give them your hard earned cash and let them manage your deposits when you actually need your loans to fuel the growth on your business? Finally, capital, I always call this, this is your skin in the game. This is your equity in the business. If you have a business that at the end of the day, after you paid yourself a salary, you made 300 net income instead of in reinvesting in the business and retain earnings or buy more inventory, et cetera, you turn around and write your check, write yourself a check for, you know, a, a bonus, then, you know, the lender's going to see that. They're going to see that you have a low level of capital. Uh, so you have very low level of skin in the game. And as such, you are a, a riskier a company to lend to. If there's a hiccup, in the business or the industry then you're in, you're, you know, you could be out uh, sooner than later. So it's crucial to understand that capital is the skin in the game and understand, you know, as is my life, liabilities is owner's equity. The stronger the owner's equity, the more financially strong you are. I always I like to add a little comic relief and you can see this guy has, doesn't have much in assets, but his barrel, we took that away from him. He had not much. It would be a pretty sight, that's for sure. So to become bankable, you got to understand what banks look for. Okay, um, 
keep your credit score at a reasonable level, 680, I would say. The debt coverage ratio, one and a quarter. Um, you know, efficiency, the cycle, understand how your working capital cycle uh, runs and, and to make sure you're on top of it and making it shorter. Understand the performance margins in your business, okay? And maintain an adequate level of capital through retained earnings, okay? Put it back in the business. Remember, cash flows is what pays the bills, all right? Keep your taxes up to date and current year financial statements. Very important. A lot of businesses are just, you know, dragging their feet in this area. Very important to be on top of it. Accounting software is a lot out there. A lot of businesses use QuickBooks. This will keep you on, on the cusp of, of understanding where your numbers are at. Remember all lenders loan process. They use the two years tax return or three. Embrace these numbers, guys. Important for you to put your foot down and, and, and you know, and take notice. Here's just a, a photo of a balance sheet that shows what you own, what you owe, and the equity in the business. And the income statement, as I mentioned, your report card. And the cash flow statement, which tells us the inflows and outflows of where the cash is in the business and remember you know using your capital structure remember you get funding from both debt and equity so understand that and my final recommendations keep track of these credit scores and seek credit repair whenever needed there's a lot of tools out there that are actually free your profit margins and your conversion cycle manage your debt responsibly thank you and i guess we can uh open up for questions let me see okay all right Okay, so do we have some questions? Are banks, okay. Are banks or lenders taking any special consideration of approving credit for business heavily impacted by COVID? Uh, yes, there, you know, obviously you've all heard of the PPPs and uh, the S, there are SBA loans out there, the SBA 7A, where they actually waive the upfront fees. And then they also, will forgive the first three months of principal and interest payments. Uh, so that, uh, again, this, I think it's, it'll be over in September, but th this is obviously an incentive uh, for a lot of companies to be able to take advantage of that. I see the next question says, does a bank care about dependency on the owner? Is a company more bankable if it has things like a, a succession plan or strong number two. Yeah, very important. I, uh, well, obviously, uh, you know, each company should always have an exit strategy. Um, and then uh, obviously uh, regarding the key people in the company, they need to, to have key man insurance. They need to demonstrate that you have taken uh, risk mitigating uh, measures to be able to protect the business from something happening to some of the key, some of the key players. Can my personal credit profile affect my business profile? Definitely, definitely, uh, it it can. That's why you, you know you have to manage, uh, you have to manage your uh, your credit, both personal and and business. Remember, I, I, okay. So I guess. Uh, we're all ready to go. If you need any further assistance, there's a lot of information uh, where you can reach me. It's been a pleasure for me, and I wish you all the best of luck.